Are you an avid gamer? Do you play Ragnarok Online, Persona 5, or Pamali? Do you know this monstrous being called Leak? Not Leak, but Leak? You know, a monster that has bulging eyes, long fangs and hair, and most importantly, just a bob of head with internal organs dangling in the air detached from their body. Nope, it's not Kuyang. I already covered an episode about Kuyang last week. Go check that out if you haven't. In this episode of 7 Female Ghosts of Indonesia, I will be covering Leak, a supernatural entity that is specifically tied to an ever-famous island in Indonesia, Bali, as it stems from the local folklore, teachings, and culture. By the way, I cannot stop myself from including this clip, but foreign tourists in Bali are definitely a different breed. <laughs> I will be dividing this video into three sections. First, etymology and history. Second, layak Bali in popular culture, specifically in video games. And third, or the last one, is layak Bali and the philosophy of envy. A little disclaimer, I'm not Balinese. I've never even been to Bali, even though it was just one to two hours plane ride from where I used to live because your girl's broke. Okay, so I apologize if there's any faulty comments that I did and do tell me if you found any uh, mistakes in my research so we all can learn. Also, I did play Stray, Mobile Legends, Gardenscapes, and GeoGuessr but I won't say that I'm super knowledgeable about Ragnarok Online, Persona 5, or Pamali. So yeah, with that lengthy disclaimer out of the way, let's start with the etymology and history. The origins of Leak Bali have often stirred conversations amongst the locals, but what is Leak? Is it simply a myth? According to the Balinese Language Dictionary of the Bali Language Center, accessed on kamusbahasaprovinsibali.id, a layak is a manifestation of animals meant to intimidate people. The term layak is closely tied to black magic. However, fundamentally, the study of layak is not about inflicting harm or learning how to hurt others. What is taught is how to attain a sense of spiritual elation during meditation. If there exists a doctrine with the intention to harm others, as has become the common perception, it's actually not leak, but what's typically referred to as telu or teranjana magic. It is this telu and teranjana that truly really carries a negative connotation learned or mastered with the aim of causing harm to others due to various motives like revenge, envy, hatred, or the desire to outpower others, according to I Gusti Ketutwidana and I Gusti Ayu Swasti. In Balinese mythology, Leak is a supernatural art known as Aji Pangeleakan. I'm so sorry if I butchered the pronunciation. <laughs> It's a mystical power that allows the practitioner to transform into various forms. It's not only limited to animal transformations, but also includes transformations into rangda, a ball of fire, or a specific colored light, all depending on the level of mastery achieved. As sources reveal in the past, the art of layak was learned for protection and toward of enemies. However, those who mastered Leak were sometimes also well versed in the dark arts, which can be misused for evil deeds. Legend has it, a person who masters the art of Leak must seek a sacrifice to enhance their power. During the day, they appear as ordinary people, leading regular lives, but come nightfall, they transform into a Leak, performing various rituals including seeking food and sacrifices around graveyards. Only those with particular spiritual sensitivity and mastery of supernatural arts can discover a leak, 
Some say one can see a layak's true form at dusk, right before evening. As mentioned earlier, those who master the layak often strengthen their abilities by mastering dark arts, reinforcing their powers with sacrifices. Like most dark arts, the sacrifices are serious, involving organs from both the living and the dead. It is said that leaks often appear in graveyards or burial areas. However, they are also known to target living humans, including their blood. Much like Kuyang in Kalimantan, leaks are believed to target pregnant women to drain the blood of the fetus or unborn children. Depicted as large, terrifying figures with bulging eyes, long tongues, and sharp teeth, these fearsome faces have become an integral part of Balinese culture. The image of a leak often appears in dance performances or in the form of paintings. Leak has also become a unique souvenir in Bali, whether in the form of masks or statues. Now, let's take a look at how Leak is depicted in popular culture, specifically in video games, because for some reasons, they are very popular in video games. In Ragnarok Online, Leak is a high-level monster that exists as the boss, or MVP, in Dewata Island a fictional portrayal of the island, Bali, in the game. A small backstory of the game revealed that Leak is responsible for causing mayhem on the island, terrorizing the residents with its monster invasions. There is also a portrayal of Leak in Persona 5 with another name, Rangda. It is one of the summonable personas that the player is able to obtain and its backstory is of a demon queen who can separate their head and entrails from their body. In Ragnarok Online and Persona 5, the story of Leak is not that explored as it is not a prominent character. But I'm going to delve into Pamali, the Hungry Witch, where Leak is the star of the show. Major spoiler ahead, Pamali the Hungry Witch. Pamali is an Indonesian horror game that draws on the supernatural tales commonly known among Indonesian populace. The stories within the game echo real world myths and supernatural tales. The developer chose the name Pamali because it's a word often spoken and deeply ingrained in everyday life, signifying a taboo or a forbidden act. The closest word in English, in my opinion, is jinx. In Pamali, you as the player follow the story of a pregnant woman named Kirana. You are invited to immerse yourself in scenarios. On March 11, 2018, a heavily pregnant Kirana travels home in the dead of night. Her mother warns her over the phone, cautioning her to be careful as it's an ill-fated Day. Upon reaching her house, Kirana is shocked to find her home in chaos. She hastily searches for her mother and finds her lying in the backyard. Her mother instructs her to retrieve a book from her room. Just as Kirana proceeds to do so, she spots a ball of fire and quickly hides. Once the coast is clear, Kirana retrieves the book and begins to read. She discovers that she is the descendant of a powerful lineage tasked with eradicating supernatural evils, one of which is Leak. The book reveals her family's history on how to kill Leak using a karis, a traditional Indonesian dagger. As she learns this, the ball of fire pursues her again. Ultimately, Kirana encounters Leak, now manifested as a disembodied head with hanging organs. Despite trying to fend it off with the karis, Kirana loses the fight and is transported to another dimension. This limbo-like dimension, hovering between life and death, provides Kirana with vital information on how the Leak changes form and hints towards a meditating figure hiding beneath a tree. In court, Kirana hurries to find this hidden entity, encountering countless obstacles on her quest to destroy Leak. Finally, Kirana succeeds in stabbing the Karis into the Leak's neck, effectively destroying it. The correct way to kill Leak is a stab through the neck 
of the detached body left by a lay practitioner in a graveyard. She and her unborn child are safe, but unfortunately at the cost of her mother's life. As she promised to carry on her mission as a supernatural eradicator, particularly of those of Lex, Kirana's hunting journey comes to a close, but her story is far from over. But go play the video game for the rest of the surprise, okay? Now we have arrived at this specific part of the video, which is my favorite, in which I will be deconstructing uh, Leak and its depiction in popular culture, specifically how it connects to the philosophy of envy. I usually deconstruct supernatural beings that I covered in this channel so far through gender studies, but since I already covered similar entity, Kuyang, through gender studies, I decided to venture into another point of view. Luckily, during my research for this Leak episode, I stumbled upon a very interesting article titled Leak Bali Media Penyaluran Rasa Iri by Igusti Ketutwidana and Igusti Ayuswasti. I've got to think to myself that philosophically, the embodiment of Leak itself is a projection of greed and envy. And I quote, Ragadi musuh maparo riatia tonggawanya tan madoh ring awak. Again, for Balinese people, don't come at me for the pronunciation. <laughs> Which means desire and similar emotions are our closest enemies, residing right within our hearts and bodies. As explained before, the practice of Leak is not inherently bad, but the individuals who lose themselves while battling with their own enemies and their own monsters are actually becoming monsters themselves. And I quote again, indeed, among the adversaries we humans often encounter and must continuously battle against are the ones lurking within ourselves. While external enemies may be visibly clear and can be defeated, the presence of these inner adversaries is far more elusive. They do not reveal themselves in a physical form, making them exceedingly difficult to conquer. Just like in the game Pamali the Hungry Witch, the antagonist is a woman who is power hungry and is willing to do anything to gain supernatural power, including killing Kirana's mother. Yes, Leak is depicted as this very scary creature with thirst of blood, especially infant blood. However, the practice itself wasn't meant to be bad. This also connects to a very popular folklore slash mythology called Chalon Arang and how this misunderstanding affected today's view on Leak practices. This is according to Dr. Komang Indra Wirawan. In the legend of Chalon Arang, she was a widow proficient in dark magic. She had a beautiful daughter named Dia Ayu Ratnamangali. Despite her beauty, Ratna Mangali could not find a husband as people feared her mother. Frustrated by her daughter's plight, Chalon Arang retaliated by kidnapping a young girl whom she sacrificed to the goddess Durga in a temple. The following day, a severe flood hit the village, causing widespread death and diseases. Upon learning of this, King Erlanga from Kediri Kingdom sought the counsel of his advisor, Empu Barada. To tackle this crisis, Empu Barada then sent his student Empu Bahula to marry Diahratna Mangali. They held a grand wedding celebration lasting seven days and seven nights, which brought calmness back to the village. Chalon Arang owned a book that contained all her dark magic spells. One day, Bahula discovered this book and handed it over to Empu Barada. When Chalon Arang found out her book had been stolen, she was infuriated and decided to challenge Empu Barada. Without the assistance of the goddess Durga, Chalon Arang was defeated. From that day on, the village was free from the threat of Chalon Arang's dark magic. As Chalon Arang defeated and her book was secured, her disciples are very active to these days from generations to generations propagating her teachings. Chalon Arang had composed four books. First, 
lontar cambra berak, second lontar sampian emas, third lontar tanting emas, and lastly lontar jung biru. Again, I'm so sorry to mispronounce this title of the books. These teachings were categorized into three levels. The basic level, where one could transform into an animal, the intermediate level, enabling a person to change into a high-flying Garuda bird, capable of spewing fire from its eyes, and the advanced level, which allowed an individual to morph into a bade, a 21-tired funeral tower and emit fire that could scorch anything it touches into ashes. In the past, Chalon Arang is mostly depicted as a power-hungry witch. However, nowadays there are many scholars who are siding with her and argue that she was the product of patriarchy of that time. If we are focusing on the power-hungry part though, as the practice of Leak is interpreted as dark magic by some of Chalan Arang's disciples, this practice has become a slippery slope. I would argue that not everyone has the means to battle against their own envy, including me. Just kidding. But what do you think? If you were to pursue this art, this dark art, especially the practice of Leak, do you think that you can do it properly without harming others? This wraps up our video today. So thank you so much for watching until now. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel because I'm also battling with my own envy. <laughs> I'm Fi from Indomie Humble Servant at your service. Bye! I've never been to Bali, but I went to Japan and Italy on scholarship. It's sad.